We're here today to share with you the Word of God. My name is Pastor Byrne of the Preaching Gospel Mission in Kingsport, Tennessee. And I'm here today with my friend, Pastor Brandon of Strong Tower Baptist Church. We're here to love you with the Word of God today. If you need a Bible, please come over and see us. We'd be happy to give you a Bible. If you need prayer, come over and talk to us. We'd be happy to pray for you. But we came today to share with you the Word of God. We all need the Word of the Lord because the Word of the Lord reveals to us that we can find true and lasting peace. It's obvious that true and lasting peace is not to be found anywhere in this world and it's not going to be. I read a couple of weeks ago about a local conflict to where our schools are supporting literature that equates the Christian God of the Bible with other false gods and of course this is not true. The Christian God is the one true God, the thrice holy God the triune God, and there is no other God beside Him. So there's conflict in this world today. But when we open the pages of the Bible and we begin to read, we find that God in His great love has revealed to us the truth about peace. And many times people will misunderstand the Scripture and they'll go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 34 where Jesus said, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. And they'll focus on the immediate purpose of that passage which was a reference to the conflict that would arise after the coming of the Prince of Peace. And truly there was conflict. Christ went to the cross and He died there. And after His resurrection and His ascension, the early church suffered a great amount of persecution. But the ultimate purpose of Jesus Christ is peace. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only door to true and lasting peace today. Conflicts have raged down through the years of this world and they continue to rage today. But the gospel of Jesus Christ is the solvent by which conflict can be dissolved inside of our hearts. It's the true gospel that brings ultimate peace. Now it's true that the gospel divides. Yes, that's true. But when you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you have peace in the midst of turmoil. Hello. Yeah, that's the way. Yeah. 
Yeah, me too. You too. Okay, have a great day. You too. Jesus Christ is the solvent by which conflict can be dissolved. And we thank God for the encouragement students have expressed in us being here today. We thank God for that. It's true that the gospel divides, but when you know Christ as Lord and Savior, you have peace in the midst of turmoil. And I'm thankful for the peace of God inside of my own life today. Jesus said in John 14 and 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This is a teaching that we need to have brought to our remembrance today. And we need to depend upon these words. You see, my friends, the peace of God is a good thing. And in Jesus Christ, we have all things that are truly good. And one of those things is peace. When you've been justified before God through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, peace comes as a result of your justification. We have peace because Christ Himself is our peace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. For He is our peace, who hath made both one, and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. That means it makes no difference today what nationality you are from. It makes no difference which background you come from. It makes no difference how far removed you are from the seed of Abraham. Jesus Christ is our peace. If you have trusted in Him and Him alone for your salvation, Jew or Greek, bond or free, male or female, it makes no difference for we are all one in Christ who has placed those who know Him in His body. And His body is one body. There's not two or three universal churches. There's not four or five bodies of Christ. Christ is not divided today. There is one true church, and that is the body of Christ. He is the Prince of Peace, and He is the head of the body. He said in John 16.33, these things have I spoken unto you that ye might have peace. In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Christ is saying to His followers that true peace cannot be found in this world, but thanks be unto God, this world cannot take away the true peace that's available in Jesus Christ. True peace comes from Christ and Christ alone because only His strength enables us to perform any duty in this world which speaks peace and pardon and atonement by which a soul can find true and lasting peace. Sin cries out for destruction. Sin cries out for ruin and hell and damnation. But there's peace found in Jesus Christ. He provided peace for those who would look to Him and Him alone by faith. For those who would look to Him and His finished work on the cross. He provides peace today for those who will look to Him for pardon and righteousness and justification. My dear friends, Christ has overcome the world. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's led captive the devil today, who is the God of this world, with all of His principalities and powers. 
and he delivers us from their power by the sacrifice of himself. Because of Jesus Christ, you have absolutely nothing to fear in this world if you are saved by grace through faith. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33, the Bible says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Oh, to preach the peace of Jesus Christ, we'd never get it all told. To preach the peace of Jesus Christ, my dear friend, who is the Prince of Peace, who has made peace by the blood of His cross, we'd never get it all told. The one whose gospel of peace we are to shod our feet with today. He's the one who preached peace to them which were afar off and to them that were nigh. The Apostle Paul said, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When you are pardoned by God, the Spirit of God orders your passions. This is peace that passes all understanding. This is peace that passes human knowledge. This is peace that passes angelic knowledge. God will meet your need according to His riches and glory when you know Him. When you have the peace of God, you will not be anxious and you will not be worried, but you will trust in the Lord to provide your need according to His will and according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The peace that I'm talking about today, only God can give it. And it's available to you today. If you need peace, but you must come through Christ and Him alone. God created this world and everything in it. He created you and He created me. And the Bible says He created us in His image. We didn't crawl out from under a rock. We didn't slither out of a slime pit. We didn't evolve from a monkey. We were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And the God who created this world is perfectly just and righteous and holy. And because God is perfectly just and righteous and holy, He must punish sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That includes you. That includes me. We live in a fallen world. We have a fallen nature. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the punishment that a just God has prescribed for sin is an eternity in an awful place called hell. But here's the good news. Christ has come. Born of a virgin. Made under the law to redeem them which are under the curse of the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Christ, being fully God and fully man, He did what nobody else could do. He lived a perfect life. He never committed not one sin in thought, word, or deed. It does not matter what the History Channel said. Christ is a sinless Savior. He lived a perfect life from cradle to grave. He lived a life for 33 years 
that you and I could not live for 33 seconds. And he went to the cross of Calvary, and there on the cross, he took the punishment that he did not deserve. He took our punishment, a punishment that you and I, as lawbreakers against God, rightly deserve. And he took that punishment upon himself. And he died on the cross of Calvary as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of many. But he did not stay dead. On the third and appointed day, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He's alive today. And he ascended to the right hand of God. And he's coming back at a time known only by the Father. And what God requires of you and what God requires of me, my dear friend, and what God requires of all people is that we repent and believe the gospel. That we turn aside from a life of sin and that we look to Christ and Him alone because Jesus Christ is our only hope today. He's the only Savior. There is no other. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. So God requires us to repent and believe the Gospel. And when you repent of your sins and you look to Christ and Him alone for your salvation, you find Jesus Christ to be a perfect Savior. He is a perfect Savior today, my dear friend. If you're here and you're saved by the grace of God, and we've seen some of the other preachers that have been on this campus, and we've seen the hatred that they have spewed out right here in this very place, we are not here to tell you that you're all going to hell. Some of us may be saved by the grace of God. And if you're here today and you're saved by the grace of God, we rejoice with you in your salvation because you are our brother or sister in the Lord. But if you don't know Christ in a saving way today, my dear friend, the call goes out. Repent and believe the Gospel and look to Christ and Him alone for your salvation. And Christ will be unto you a perfect Savior. God bless you all. We hope you enjoy this beautiful day. If you need a Bible, we will be happy to give you a Bible. If you need prayer, come over and talk to us. We will be happy to pray for you. If you need to discuss any spiritual matter, we are very approachable today. My name is Pastor Vern of the Free Gift Gospel Mission, and this is my friend, Pastor Brandon of Strong Tower Baptist Church, and we would love to meet you today. So come over and talk to us. May God bless you today, and have a wonderful day, and thank you all for listening.